Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Waking up for a nice early Wednesday morning. Got one pound of ground beef down and in the gullet. So we're good to go. And I do want to be wishing you well, as always. I want to be wishing you the best, the best, the happiest, the happiest possible Wednesdays out there. The hump day, as they say. And of course, I've been doing a terrible job, an absolutely terrible job of actually announcing my own things. And of course, all of my programs are on sale for the rest of the month with the code year20. Whoops, wrong. Let's actually go over right over here to the actual page itself. Year20, Y-E-A-R, all capitals, then number. 20 for 20 percent off again this applies to all payment plans whether it's you know the full one-time payment or if you want to do a 10-month payment plan it's all good and of course this, this applies to all programs but I should also explain that because there's been a lot of confusion on this. Um, the technical analysis program is the one that I was just showing. That is the all-encompassing technical analysis program that also goes through risk management, position management, understanding market dynamics, and of course, access into the hidden Discord community and actually access to two of the proprietary indicators. That is the one that is probably going to be most appropriate to most people who are actually interested in this in the first place because, of course, for the most part, I do not believe that most people should even get involved in a program like this because these are geared towards very, you know, very serious minded type people who want to do trading typically in the sense of as a living, you know, whether you want to break out out of, you know, whatever you're doing right now, or if you've been interested in trading for a while, this is, that was designed for that type of person, which is, which I understand is not applicable to most people. 99.9% .9 of people not applicable to for those people, definitely check out my free materials. It's all on my YouTube, and that'll get you probably exactly where you want to be, if not just you know right around the corner. And that's all of the free uh, all the free playlists. Anyways, uh, underneath that is the options program. That is the one that is just dedicated solely to on understanding options, like the derivative products options, and then the jewel indicators is just access to the jewel indicator itself, which I typically show on my uh, stream. So I wanted to get off that right now, and let's get the <laughs> let's get the uh, there we go. Come on, baby disappear there we go okay so now back on to some actual magic internet money because this is what we came here for and huh, bitcoin's done absolutely nothing whoops it looks like my pain is very very stretched out there we go let's try a little bit of that and maybe even just a smidge more sorry about that a little bit of technical difficulties to start the day but there we go i think that's good enough and overall bitcoin doing absolutely nothing in the overnight hours as we you know said was pretty much likely uh again the medium time frame perspective is is the same nothing's changed there as long as bitcoin's above and closing uh, daily doodles above the yellow 21 exponential and below that uh that that cyan 89 exponential below 30 39 uh, 30 nothing really has changed from the medium time from perspective as far as I'm concerned. This again, the area encompassing between now is rising at almost 38.20 for the downside and 39.30 even to the upside. So of course, if Bitcoin does break out of, uh, out above and closes a higher level delta above 39.30 and again, closes being the keyword, then I would be looking for a move over to about 4,200 and probably beyond, you know, 4,400 would kind of make sense after that. Uh, personal opinion, of course, I don't trade my opinion, but that's... <laughs> Given this, given the structure, that would kind of make sense. Um, but overall, I'm not really leaning towards that happening. I think that Bitcoin's probably going to put some time in this area, grind this area out, you know, between 39.30 and and of course our rising support at 30, uh, 38.20. Um, but I th what I think is more likely is that overall in a bear market, I'm I'm going to be bearish, and I do believe that uh, it would, it's more likely to break out to the downside. Again, just given the overall you know market trend, uh, that has been the winning side for over a year, well over you know, and uh, and of course we did break the 21 exponential to the downside. This yellow moving average right here at 38, uh, 20-ish area, I would be looking for a quick move down to about 3650, 3600, and then overall move down to the range lows over time. So of course, Bitcoin quite literally right in the middle of both of these moving averages, both the, you know, both supporting resistance for this medium time frame perspective, which is very, again, extremely important because Overall, whatever happens in the lower time frames, yes, you can scalp it. Yes, we've been we've been looking at scalps. We we spoke about a couple of them yesterday. Well, I'll I'll show a few more today. Um, but as far as for actual trading, I don't really want to be putting risk on in these positions. I want to be saving my account and just kind of explaining my sort of perspective right now. I want to be saving my account for when we actually break one of these major areas that uh, um, that uh, that we just spoke about because those are where the you know those are where the nice trades can happen. Um, and really, like how many of those do you have to find. Uh, how many of those do you have to find a month to make a living, right? I mean, shit. Uh, I mean, we, we, we've been looking at the higher time frames, and uh, and of course, you know, when we caught the 6,300 short down to 3,000, I mean, it's like, how many of those do you, do you need to live per year? I mean, if you do it right, not, <laughs> you, need, you need maybe one for every five, 10 years. Um, 
But my point is that a little bit of patience goes a long way here. I do see a lot of similarities in this area as um, as, 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 we've, as we've seen in the past. I don't want to make this into a fractal discussion because I fucking hate fractals. <laughs> I think that they're kind of bullshit. Uh, but there are a lot of like actual tentacles in confluence with what we've seen in the past. And remember, past market cycles do have a lot of similarities between you know, between the overall feeling and the overall trend, they have brotherly characteristics, but they're not identical brothers. They're, they're, they're certainly not twins. They're like, they're, they're brothers, as I say. Um, and as you can see right here, very similar area between this area right here in 2014, 2015, and this area right here in 2018, 2019. In fact, the, we can just go over right now. Let me just pull this out. There we go. When in doubt, pull it out. You see this ascending triangle right here. I mean, well, basically, if you want to go through the whole thing, we had a parabolic blow off top, um, blows it off, uh, puts in a nice, bull trap right here makes a descending triangle in this formation and drops down about 53 and a half percent well we have a very similar setup in 2017 2018 actually or sorry 2018 2019 we have a parabolic blow off top we have a descending triangle right over here breaks to the downside and we're down about 52 53 percent then after that in 2014 2015 we bounce up what about about 24 25 percent and over the course of about 10 weeks uh, i've actually counted it out <laughs> um and over here in 2017 or sorry 2018 2019 about a 25 percent bounce over the course of what is now 16 weeks um so so you know you would expect market cycles to take longer as an asset matures assuming that things are actually going in the right direction you know you're gonna have more people to kind of chew through you're gonna have more you know the the, the books are just gonna be thicker in general so it's gonna take more time to actually you know reassort and reassign people to their positions if you want to think about it from the market movers perspective anyways um you know a lot of those things kind of align you know in alignment with each other i think that's a little bit more eerie when we start to look at uh, some fundamental indicators like the MVT signal right here, the network value to it's basically the network value divided, divided by the daily transaction value. So again, a fundamental type indicator. And if we just go back into that same price action that we were looking at in 2014, 2015, which was this area right here, and then we bring up the MVT signal, you can see a very similar signature what, to, as to what I'm going to show you in 2018, 2019. But basically, you know, your parabolic blow off top, come back down, cool off, then put in a bull trap right here, signal red once again. And uh, this is the area in question of what we were looking at on price action. So I'm going to mark it off with a nice horizontal right around the 80-ish mark. And as you can see, if we scroll into the current present times, this that's this that's exactly where Bitcoin got down to on that first um on, you know on that first drop from six thousand to three thousand and again same sort of center parabolic blow off top right here comes back down we actually did signal a green here and then I'd and then I'd kind of argue that we just played out a different bubble right here above six thousand again signaling red once again and then coming down exactly to this area now of course the rally the, the rally off this area I mean I don't really think of like MVT signal rallying you know but what I do what uh, but what I do look at it as is, um, is you know, it's, it's having the same sort of signature. And more importantly, it's getting right, right around the area where it actually typically does signal red. Um, actually, this was where it signaled red last time, right around 130, um, above 130. But I'd say above 140 is when it becomes a lot more intense as far as an actual signal goes so we got up we actually got up above 130 this time um, and of course in this area we actually you actually can see you actually can see that this area has been resistance in the past around the 130-ish area. But more importantly, again, we have a we have the same signature on something that is completely exc excluded from our price, volume, and time indicators that we were just looking at. So that tells me that there is a lot of there, there is a legitimacy to looking at these two areas together. Not only that, but if we take this area back off, sorry, that's completely <laughs> it's really ugly to look at. But if we look at this area right here, just just using the MBT signal and looking at price action, we see divergence. We see bearish divergence going on right now, where the MBT signal is making higher highs and price action is making lower highs significantly lower highs actually in fact so again this is something that is very concerning and, and uh from, from a fundamental perspective as that has been the trend in the past that uh when you do print divergence on this guy it has not been good the last time that we actually even printed divergence was actually this area right here we printed divergence between this this high 8400 and this high right here at 7400 um but the last major time that we actually got it was right here uh, or sorry, the time before that was 20,000 where we, where we printed a high right here and then another high right here. Not good. So again, um, sorry, and the lower high on the off sweater. So again, you know, looking at something like this, it is concerning to say the least. I'd, I'd say, I'd say it's quite concerning. So 
again, a lot of similarities between these area and really when we go down to the daily and now we start using again, using our tentacles to to further confirm something like this. I want to I want to play I want to pay particular um, attention to the yellow 20 minute exponential, which again, you see in 2014 2015, it was holding up price action right here, holding it up, holding it up, holding it up. And then once it let go, once we actually open and close the daily dildo below it, that was your send off into the actual final low of that market cycle. So you see the same sort of signature over here going into 2019, where Bitcoin's been really struggling along the 21. I mean, it's holding above, but as long as it's holding above, can't get too excited. But if it does break below, that is uh, that is in a way what I'm thinking. So this whole consolidation right here has already taken, um, like I said, about 16 weeks. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, sorry, 17 weeks. Uh, and then again, compared with this area right over here in 2014, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and then roll over on number 12. So is it going to happen soon is the real question if we were looking at this two relay time well this is where i do, this is where i take a step back from the fractal discussion because i don't think that i can say that i don't believe in fractals i don't believe in fractal time i don't believe that it can be traded on does it actually work well the dubious part about it is that at some point it probably will work but the amount of times that you have to trade around it in order to figure that one out it can be career ending. I mean, it, like I always give this example when people were posting the the, the Wall Street uh, market cycle cheat sheet all throughout the bull run from about 2016 to 2018, essentially, they're putting on putting it on each and every one of these highs saying, this is the high, I've done the fucking fractals, and you know what? We ain't going higher, bro. Well, that didn't work out too well. It's the same thing as the perma bears right now saying that, uh, you know, Bitcoin has to go down to, you know, I don't know, 500 bucks or whatever it might be. Uh, to the upside, people are doing the same thing. You know the per, or, or sorry the perma bears no sorry I have that backwards the perma bears were were, were calling house on each and every one of these guys but of course it went straight up to fucking twenty thousand and anyone who's trying to sell you know short five thousand you know three thousand. 700 they got wrecked beyond belief by the same token the perma bulls to the downside are telling us the same thing right uh, looking you know uh, uh, a base bit you know ba ba basically same sort of signature so. Again, um, that's why I pay attention to the tentacles rather, and also the fundamentals in a way, rather than just saying, oh, fractal, we have fractal. It's like, no, that doesn't really work, um, at least as far as I'm concerned. So if we do start to lose that 21 exponential on the daily, that's where I start to get, um, that's, uh, that, that, that's where I start to get a little bit more like timing bearish, I suppose. As I said, that would be my trigger for actually taking a, the next position. Jesus Christ, my phone's going Oh, bastard. <laughs> Phone's always going crazy, man. Um, anyways, uh, while we're here on the daily, let's uh, let's look at the daily also. Let's get this guy off and out. Uh, we do have daily stokes still headed up, so fair enough. Um, price action going flat while daily stokes are headed up is not the best sign, in my opinion. Uh, daily RSI is flat as well, trending below the exponential, so it would suggest a little bit of downwards pressure. Um, daily jewel. By the way, the jewel has actually been updated. You'll you'll notice another trending indicator uh, up top right here, and there there is a change to the uh, to, 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 to this also right here as well. I'll probably put up a video um, later this week to explain very visceral changes, not huge changes. Um, the overall way to use this is still the same, but these, these do add some more confluences. Anyways, more importantly, with the daily jewel, zero signal at all. What's what? I mean, we've been in the middle of this range. Any anywhere in the middle of this range, I do not take signals in. I I, I do not like it. I know more cavalier people will look at that as perhaps a little bit of pressure being added, but I don't see that. I do not see that. In fact, I would actually be looking for the lower time frames to make a run back up, probably around 3900 ish area, which we can get into now. As really all you know, if you know if you're not going to be trading. I mean, if, if you want to, if you don't want to like wait weeks and weeks or months or whatever it might be, you know, you're probably, you're kind of stuck with trading the lower time frames. This is a two hour right here. This is the lowest time frame I'd really go to right now. Um, and as you can see, you know, we put in this ascending broadening wedge right here. It broke out to the downside, hit the measure move. Um, and then we've crawled up our way and retested this area once and twice and actually rejected both times. But uh, as far as I see, I do think that this gives another try upwards, actually. Uh, going back to our oscillators, let's look at the two hour stokes. Two hour stokes are actually coming down. So fair enough. That would actually be against what I'm saying. Uh, what about the four hour? Four hour should be headed up, but they are losing momentum. So perhaps I take back what I just said. Um, and use this. I mean, if I was looking for a trade right here, maybe I could use 38, uh, 3870 as uh, as a risk management tool if I wanted to take a short. But I really want to see these um, time frames actually start to fall over and collapse. If this is going to take over, I, I 
still do you think that Bitcoin spends some more time in this range? Yes, it has been 17 weeks. Doesn't mean that we can't put in, you know, 18, 20 weeks. Um, do I think that that's going to happen? Probably not. I think that we get resolution on this before end of month, actually. Um, I, I actually strongly believe that we get resolution on this before end of month, but that's also still another three weeks, right? So that actually could theoretically take you up to 20 weeks. Anyways, um, you know, if I was looking for a trade, I'm not looking for like major trades until we break those areas. But, you know, a nice scalp, maybe if you caught, you know, um, maybe if you caught the retest of this area, 3875, that would have been a nice trade. Um, but overall, I'd really want to wait for myself. I'm going to take a position if we make another stab up into this blue box territory, which begins at around 3900. That's where the selling pressure has emerged from all the way to, again, 3930, as we've seen before. Um, and, and of course, the support to the downside right around 38, uh, I mean, technically 3820 now, uh, or, or a few ticks below 3820 but right i'd say 3800 just to be safe and again i i do think that being safe in an area like this is of the utmost importance just because there's no real reason to force a trade right here when i mean you can just you know with a little bit of patience you could just right you could you could just jump on the next kind of medium time frame trend um make life easier for yourself but of course <laughs> the hardest part about that is just waiting. So yeah, looking at the uh, looking at four hour, yeah, the the four hour stocks are getting a little bit tired. I'm I'm curious what the six hours are saying. Six hour are getting a little bit tired, but uh, that would be across the upside. Again, a long time for that guy to actually confirm itself or or deny itself. Uh, let's go eight hour. Eight hours gonna be down as well. Ten hours likely gonna be down. Yeah, in twelve hours gonna be down. So again, looking at something like this. Um, I do think to myself that uh, I mean, you do see that 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 twelve hour ten simple is providing some some resistance right here, and actually you can see a clear you know you can see, you can see, can see a clear support resistance actually between these two moving up just the red and the yellow. Um, but uh, again, I do think that this is going to take some time, and I wouldn't be surprised if we made another run towards thirty nine hundred. So if you know if you didn't get in the short right here, if you, if you didn't get in the short on the secondary retest of this, uh, I wouldn't be in any in, in any sort of rush. I do think that it, again, I I, th I still think it, it it crawls back up this way, um, and gives a little bit of a test. Uh, anyways, let's go over and check out. Um, let's check out the really high time frames. Let's look at the let's look at the two day right here. Two day um two day is actually currently below the ten simple. We lost it on the last close, and I believe that we will close another one tonight. We will close another one tonight at 7 p.m. Sorry, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and as you can see, we are below the red 10 simple moon average. So as long as we're below that, yeah, you know, losing losing a little bit of support, of course. But this is such flighty, floaty price action. I don't put all that much weight on it, to be honest with you. Uh, Two-day stokes are still down. I would be bearish off that just because each and every time that we actually have crossed these guys down for the last year, it has led on to some pretty massive dumps. I mean, this was your high in uh, in January. This was your high in, at, at uh, 6,000, you know, right before moving down to 3,000. This was your high in early September at 7,400 before moving down to 6,000. This was your high in early August before, uh, before breaking 8,400 down to 6,000. This was your high in uh, May of last year 10,000 to 6,000 then this was your double top in uh, February last year at 12,000 of course we can do the same thing with the three day in fact the three day has a very clear trend because the three day will, it, will the three three day close night yes it will three day will have a chance to I mean if, if the three day ends above the 21 and 10 simple I don't consider that hugely interesting but I you know of course it's just just another thing kind of coming in right around that 3800 number um, more importantly though for the three day uh, th uh, three day time frame we, we see three day soaks right here actually crossing down and again there is actually actually a very obvious trend line going on right here and more importantly not only that trend line but it's actually it's actually converging with another trend line which is typically when you see some pretty nasty uh, moves happen uh, coming in all the way back from December of 2017 20,000 Bitcoin have you heard of that have you do you remember that I do uh, I sometimes I reminisce about those times as well maybe you do as well because that it was just so so much easier man so much fucking easier um but again, you know, you gotta you gotta work for your money at some point. Uh, no complaints there. So you know, we are converging on these two resistances and crossing down. Tell, tell me that it is being respected. And again, each and every time that we've crossed these three-day stokes down for the past, you know, over a year, that has the trend has been major move down after that. Again, this was your high in, in January of this year. This was your high of uh, six thousand in November before we're moving down to three thousand. This was your high of you know same same areas August high of eighty four hundred, uh, May high of ten thousand high of 20,000 right here, you know? So again, looking at something like this, I do think to myself, um, 
all right, they're, you know, building a case for the downside. That would certainly be on the case, or sorry, certainly be on, this, on, on the side of the bears right now. Um, not only that, but we looked at the MBT signal on the, um, you know, on the, uh, on, on, on the daily. If we go over here and look at the two week and go over to an exchange that actually uh, has enough history, we can see that uh, on Bitstamp, we have the two week 10 simple moon average actually coming in right around where? Right around this 3,900 number, which... It's just another major resistance coming around this area, which the 10 simp the 10 simple and the two week total time frame has actually been pretty fucking good. It's been really good. Uh, once we broke it la last year in January, we have been unable to both open and close a two week total above it ever since. And not only that, but as Bitcoin consolidates this area, look at the volume signature down around here. Look at the price structure as Bitcoin uh, consolidates this area and is still be held in below the red 10 simple moving average. I would look at these two moving averages right here, the yellow and the green uh, 21 and 55 to actually act as as you know <laughs> as kind of like a lever pulling a point and tell me telling me what the uh you know what what the bots and algos are likely to do as this has crossed as we're consulting and as we're as long as we're below the 10 simple i do look at this as telling me that the trend is slowly but surely being ground down and intensified to the downside again gonna intensify essentially bot and algo selling which would likely be the impetus for actually breaking this consolidation to the downside take this one more step we go over to the monthly and the monthly same sort of thing we can see that the green 50 exponential moving average has been holding back price action ever since we broke it for the first time in bitcoin's history in december of this past year um and you can see that bitcoin is being beheld and below the 50 exponential which is 3890 ish area so again just another thing coming in around 3900 you know we that that area is of so much importance because if bitcoin does break above it my personal opinion is that you see that quick move to about 4200 and probably be on to 44 maybe things even get a little bit crazier all the way to like 48 49 um, but for now, I see this as a major resistance showing up on on just about every time frame from daily to 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 two week to monthly to other you know we're going to look at other charts as well. But overall, these two moving averages again as these two guys approach each other, that is not a good sign. It's going to likely be the impetus for this whole consolidation you know, being shuffled to the downside is that that is what it would suggest. Of course, this would have to be initiated on a monthly total time frame. So I need to see it actually fully and formally cross. But if that were to happen while Bitcoin is still keyword still still below the 50 exponential, I would be pretty fucking bearish. I'd be pretty fucking bearish based off that. Um, let's go back to the daily for a second. Uh, not only do we see all those resistances within that area and also the you know, the daily 89. But if we put on the drawing tools, and we go over here to my bit Mexican chart, you can see the 236 Fibonacci retracements coming in right around this area as well. Uh, I also I also do want to point out some confluences with uh, CMEs, which is extremely important to me CME charts showing that the same area that we were just looking at is actually completely different represented on CME. So you can see that this trend line goes all the way back to late November, uh, gaining, grabbing one, two, three, four, five highs along this guy. So again, just another thing coming around 3,900. And as you can see, you know, we are struggling right here. It does look like it wants to give it another test. I mean, that 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 was a good pick me up off the uh, daily 21 right here, uh, the yellow moving average. But I do think that uh, as long as we're be held in below this area, I would be looking for pressure to take on over. Uh, Daily Stokes are looking a little bit tired. They are looking a little bit tired, but of course, until they actually formally cross down, I wouldn't get you know too excited if I'm if, if I'm bearish. Again, it has been a pretty good indication um, as of recent times. Daily RSI not telling us all that much. Um, yeah, I, I'm not gaining too much from the RSI right now. Uh, is below the exponential, I believe. No, it's not. Sorry, it's resting on it right now. Uh, I don't. I don't consider that a signal either which way, actually. Okay, uh, let's go check out GBDC. Where did GBDC clo close last night? And actually, GBDC closing at four dollars and sixty cents, selling off in the last um, in the last hour of the uh, of the trading session. And what are we doing right now? We are actually flirting around with that trend line, as you can see. Maybe lower time frames will get it. And uh, is it broken? Is it not broken? Let's. We got to go down to an hourly, perhaps. Yeah, it looks like it is broken to me. Uh, looks like it is broken to me. Uh, this would this would suggest that support is all the way down at about four dollars and uh, thirty nine cents, which would probably align with the breakage of that 3800 on spot this has been a leading indicator for the past um for the past uh, year you know it's, it's been pretty damn well or sorry pretty damn good and we see here the same sort of signature from beforehand you know yes the price action does look a little bit different but lower high lower high lower high same high and also bearish divergence on that last step as well one two three actually and below the exponential so to me if i was looking at gbdc i would be bearish on it as of the current moment in time as given the rejection and follow through from monday and tuesday very important that the the uh, coming into this week it could have gone 
if we were, if we were gonna take this guy upwards and onwards, I believe that we would have seen it. Um, so cool. Alrighty, let's go check out uh, longs and shorts. Um, longs and shorts, we have about 22,000 open longs versus 21,000 open shorts. Getting really, really close. This is about the closest they've been in months. Um, yeah, it's gotta be months, man. Um, so again, though, you know, it's the, the trend still has been when there's an imbalance and when shorts are down and around, this red box territory, basically below 20,000 open shorts, the trend has been major dumps emerge from this area. Again, the same areas that we spoke about before, February double top at 12,000, uh, May top at 10,000, August top at 8,400, November top at 6,000 before going out to 3,000. And once again, we're in this area, but also look how we're emerging out of the red box territory, which also tells me if the bears are gonna resume this trend and are going to make this trend their friend, um, <laughs> then I, I'd imagine it probably does happen pretty much very soon very soon you'd, you'd want to see them take over as uh the underlying market dynamics are still on uh, you know in in favor of the bears just barely right now but uh looking at something like this that has been the trend and the trend is your friend until the end of the trend so we are going to get resolution on that I'd, I'd assume very 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 soon with whichever way that this uh whichever way that the medium time frames break uh going over here to the crypto fear and greed index you can see that we're actually taking out a 54 right now let me make sure that you can actually see this there we go yeah we're taking out a 54 which is neutralish we were greedy the last couple of days and then pretty greedy uh, a couple of weeks ago at 69 which is a great number as you can see right here but again the trend here has been each and every time that you know the crypto fear and greed index gets above a 50 marker that is called the tops of the past year really really well so again, going all the way back, uh, I do think that you know if this you know if if, if we're going to see the 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 good old trend um, continue, that's it likely happens from here. Likely happens from here. Um, so that is why I'm a little bit hesitant. But if I am looking for positions, I'm typically looking for shorts. So 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 let's get on over and check out the top shit coins. I think we've covered enough of Bitcoin right now. Uh, what's Mr. Buterall doing? Mr. Buterall certainly the weakest and the sickest of the bunch overall in the context of a of a massive rising channel, right? But going down to the lower time frames, you can see it is the weakest out of them all by far. Below the 200 simple on the four hour total time frame, uh, opening and closing a full total below there actually which we haven't done in a while, but uh, just looks weak, just rolling over, Again, got that rolling hills price action. Again, do I think that, um, you know, if, if Bitcoin were to break out to the upside above 39.30, Mr. Buterall probably gets pulled up as well, you know, and and also uh, there was, and, and I also just do want to give a little bit of an example, there was uh, some sort of new or quote unquote news that came out last night that uh, the SEC commissioner or, or something like this, double confirmed that Ethereum is not going to be con uh, considered security. Well, that's great. But also, this is where I say, okay, news doesn't matter. You know, news does not fucking matter. Now, of course, I know that people knew this beforehand, but to have something like this reiterated and have no reaction from price action, it's like, how do you trade something like that? You know, a lot of people are going to be buying just based off that fact. It's like, Ethereum, Buterol has good news, so I'm going to buy. It's like, okay. Exhibit A, in a bear market, bullish news gets sold into or just doesn't even get played at all. I mean, this this one producing no reaction, zero reaction. Uh, Mr. Buterall, again, on higher time frames, not looking too healthy. Uh, did lose the 21 yesterday. Actually, both opened and closed below it, I believe. Let us let me confirm this. We opened 135 and 41 cents. We closed 136.27 cents. Yes, we have opened and closed below the yellow 21 exponential. That's a big deal to me. That's a very big deal to me as Mr. Buterall can bring the market down if we if we were to see just like just like one of the top threes can bring the market up like we saw with mrs Lequin, like we saw with mr buterall in, Dece in december they can also bring the market down as well so if i do start to see uh, mr buterall really violate this area uh that'll be the first initial it's probably going to tell you before bitcoin does it it's probably going to tell you before bitcoin as this one is looking weaker uh, let's go over to the four hour four hour stokes are hinting at across the downside uh let's see what are the eight hours doing eight hours are actually hinting at across the upside um what about the two hour two hour are down so I, I I do see some pressure building up downwards right here. I'm curious what the what the higher time frame saying. Yeah, uh, twelve hour stokes are down. Uh, two day stokes are down. Three day stokes are down. Bad. Um, yeah, man, looking looking weak here. The three day will have a chance to actually break the twenty one as well later today, as it's coming in right around one thirty four and uh, forty forty one cents. So again, not looking too healthy. Um, 
I'm not looking too healthy. Now, where's this thing likely to go to if it breaks down? Uh, well, one, 131 and a quarter is next support, although we've tested it a couple times. I'd imagine that if we do revisit it again, it probably does break, and I'd be looking for a move down to about 127, uh, 127 and a half area. That's also the 0.5 Fibonacci retracement. If that area fails, then I'd be looking for the full retrace down to the 618 at 117. Or sorry, 116. Um, so yeah, let's go check out Mrs. Litecoin, uh, the one of the stronger ones of the bunch. How's she doing right now? Uh, yeah, still, 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 again, operating as one of the more stronger ones. But we do see daily stokes are crossing down now. This has been a good indication in the past. Um, getting this last dump right here. But overall, if I put on the, if I put on my 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 drawing tools, you do see that it is operating in the context of a rising broadening wedge, which is typically a bearishly resolved pattern. It can take a long time to resolve itself here. I mean, I, again, I, I wouldn't be, I would certainly not be um, dismissive of another move up to test about $57, 57 and a half, something like that, and grind this top once again. But uh, as you know, as, as you do see the volume falling off, as this pattern continues to fail to fully break out above the above the most critical areas, that is a warning sign. Let's go over to the three day. What's the three day doing? Yeah, three day being stopped right at. Look at this. Three day being stopped right at the 200 exponential. Three day uh, Stokes also. So hinting at a cross, or sorry, will cross down by end of tonight if it does end here or lower. Um, so yeah, again, in, in this overall, we do have three-day bearish divergence going on as well. Not only that, but we have we have we have four-touch bearish divergence on the daily on on our RSI and below the exponential. So not looking so hot as far as the indicators go. Uh, it's going to take some magic to really to really buck this, I'd imagine. Uh, but of course, if it does break down, we already hit our first target of 52 and a half. It actually got down to 52.15. Um, so if it does break down again, I'd be looking all the way down to about $50. That's going to be the next major support. Um, if $50 is violated, then very big problems, uh, as I'd be looking for, you know, move down to around 45, 44 ish area, which for Mrs. Litecoin is going to be a massive move. She's a very strong and independent woman, but. Is she independent enough to do her own thing for forever? I'd, I'd argue probably unlikely. Probably unlikely. Um, anyways, let's get on over and check out uh, what are the other uh, top shit coins doing? Uh, BNB. What's BNB doing? Uh, BNB. Looking this. I mean, BNB is the strongest one out of them all, but I don't really consider BNB in like the same category as like the as like the top ten cryptos, just because it's you know it's an exchange coin. Um, but fair enough. You know, <laughs> CZ doing his thing. Uh, we'll be printing some bearish divergence on the daily. Uh, daily stokes are actually looking t looking like they want to cross back up this is gonna be, this has been a good reaction we spoke about this on stream last night i said i do believe that it was trying to reaccumulate and that is exactly what it's doing right now again not saying that to toot my horn or, or sound arrogant or anything like that that's not my intention is so that you can you know you can recognize it yourself but basically just held up above our critical support trend line at 13 dollars and uh what was it like 90 cents um as long as it's doing that you know it's it's okay um and gonna gonna try to reaccumulate this area. I mean, Jesus Christ, man, this thing really, this thing can actually do its own thing, it, and it has been consistently doing that. But in the more in the very low time frames, I would be looking for a pullback, like right now, probably somewhere down around fourteen dollars and seventy three and a half cents. I'd expect that to be defended. If that is not defended, it's not the end of the world. It's, it's the, this this whole formation will lose its shape, its structure, if it does break about thirteen dollars and ninety cents. However, so it does have some work to do. For now, it's quite constructive, and I would I would consider this reaccumulation so far. Uh, Zcash, um, Zcash, and Zcash actually had a decent move yesterday, but where did it end up? Where did this decent end? Where, where did this decent move end up? Right at the resistance of this ascending triangle, typically a bearishly resolved pattern, but uh, actually looking okay right there. Uh, really ending the day strong right at the resistance, which is typically a good sign. Uh, but daily stocks getting way up there. Daily RSI is mm, not telling us anything um would be okay I'd, I'd say it's more okay than not uh but let's go over to bcash what's bcash doing same sort of descending triangle not brushing up against a re uh, against a major resistance as uh, zcash was so maybe bcash is the real zcash and below all major movement averages not necessarily too good of a chart tron cash what's he doing still hanging around the 200 simple as we said um you know, I, I would be looking for this probably to rally back up and maybe even retest this resistance right around uh, two point two and a half cent. But uh, overall, that is the major resistance until you know until broken. If it can break it to the, up to the upside, then I would be looking for a move to about almost uh, two uh, almost three cents. But uh, my opinion is that this one probably, you know, if it were to rally back up, it's going to be sold into most likely. Uh, Neocash, what's Neocash doing? Again, one of the stronger ones, um, holding up above most, most of these moving averages right here. But major resistance right around $9.30, as long as you're below there. 
you know, it's 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 basically Bitcoin below thirty nine thirty. It's only just below there to make a relation. EOS Cash uh, support three dollars sixty cents. If you do break three dollars sixty cents, I would be looking for a move down to about three dollars and uh, thirty cents. Um, by the same token, made resistance right around uh, four dollars even. Uh, two hundred simple, two hundred exponential. Uh, let's go look at Ripple Cash, Ripple My Nipples, baby, and Ripple My Nipples take another stab down to this lower support. Actually, I, I made a triangle within the triangle. Uh, it's triangleception going on right now. I love triangles. I absolutely love triangles. Love eggs. Love and love these. You know, three thing. No, that's a rectangle. <laughs> Geometry, not my strong suit. Um, but overall, you know, below all major movement averages and major resistance right around 31 and a half cent. As long as it's below that, you know, it's still in the context of a descending triangle, which is typically a more bearishly resolved pattern. Doesn't mean that it can't break out to the upside. I've seen every pattern break out every goddamn which way. If that were to happen, I'd be looking for a move to about 33 and a, and a half. Uh, but the overall structure is not really destroyed. Uh, you know, it, the, the overall structure is still pretty bearish as long as it's below about 34 and a half cent. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you could even say th uh, 37 cent now, too, as the, 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 the more time that it spends down here, the worse it kind of gets, actually. Uh, but, of course, the major support is 28 cents. If 28, is 28 cents is broke, sorry, 28 and a half cents is broken, then I would be looking for a move down to uh, high teens, low 20 cents area. Uh, Monero Cash, what's Monero Cash doing? Uh, looking a little bit stronger than, uh, um, th uh, than the majority, actually, as well. But in the overall context of this consolidation, major resistance right around 54 and a half dollars and support more preliminarily speaking right around fifty dollars even um i'm curious what the oscillators say here mm, daily's kind of getting eh, not really telling us anything would, would say that momentum is up daily r side not not giving us too much insight uh stellar cash what's stellar cash doing all right grinding this top as we spoke about yesterday but unable to break it so far it's not a death sentence so i want to see the lower time frames are we going to have a chance? No, we are printing bearish divergence now on the four-hour total time frame. We'll be looking for a pullback here. I'll be looking for a pullback at least to about ten cents or a little bit below ten cents. If that area fails, then the next support is right around nine and a half cents. Nine and a half cents needs to be defended if it is tested. If this consolidation is going to give another try, because what's going to happen if this turns into rejection and we actually do confirm this as another local high? Well, this is going to look like an ascending broadening wedge, which likely going to have. A downwards target somewhere around uh, eight cents, I'd imagine, if if that were to happen. But for now, you know, I still give it the benefit of the doubt for hanging it high. Um, but uh, needs needs to break ten point about ten point eight, ten point nine cent for it to break the next level, and then we could see a run to about twelve and a half cent, which uh, be quite significant for this guy. I mean, at that point in time, it actually it could actually do some pretty cool things. Um, we could even extend this tr this this trend line going forward, going all the way back from. Uh, this was December 2017th, by the way. Uh, you know, maybe run up into that area if we do break it on to, onwards and up to the upside. But for now, I, you know, for, uh, for now, lower time frames do want to come back down is what it looks like. Um, so yeah, I think we've talked about all of those. Go check out traditional markets, 279 and a half. Again, this is why I do not want to be bearish at all whatsoever when you got a golden cross on the daily on spies on, on traditional markets. I do not like trading against something like this. This is why it was not bearish coming into this week. Or, or sorry, maybe maybe not bearish is the right word, but like not full on breakdown bearish. Of course, we just spoke about the move coming down here to about 272. The the reaction off that is exactly what I'd be looking for for this uh, to likely be, you know, at the very least respected. We closed yesterday, or sorry, we closed two days ago above the uh, daily 10 and yesterday both opening and closing above it. Very, very you know, pretty good action so far. Um, I would imagine that it's probably going to be a little bit of selling pressure right around 281, which we're getting damn close to. Sorry, we got all the way up to 280 yesterday. So anywhere between 280 and 281, that is kind of the the order block, the supply the supply territory uh, get, uh, gathering our last one, two, three, four, five highs. Do we find a six high there? Well, again, the trend is your friend until the end of the trend. But like I said, I really do not like going against... Um, I do not like going against a, uh, a daily dollar golden cross. I really don't like that. I'm curious what the lower time frames look like, if we can get any insight into the price action right here. A um, little bit of bearish divergence, so maybe we, do, uh, maybe we do come back down and fill the gap somewhere right around 278.5 uh, today. Uh, but I, I would still be looking for it to probably be picked up. I would not be bearish on this guy really from like a higher time frame perspective or like a daily perspective until we actually break back down below 271. Sorry, sorry, 272. If it, if it breaks back down below there, then yes, I would be bearish. But for now, I respect the golden cross until basically it gets undone essentially. And this is a very fresh one. So I, I really don't like being on the other side of it. Uh, of course, if this thing does break above 281, I'd be, I'd be extremely bullish on it as I, don't, I just don't see anything stopping me from about 287. 
uh, 290, basically your prior highs, essentially. So again, a lot, you know, a lot at stake right now. I'm curious what the weekly does look like. Yeah, weekly support right in the same area. You're having a lot of good things happen on the weekly as well. Uh, as long as you're above 272, I do not want to be bearish on this guy. Um, I, and I feel strongly about that. I would not be bearish as long as it's above 272. Do, do, um, does the same area that's gathered our last five tops get, get another top? I mean, you know, it's probably worth taking off some risks there. I'd definitely take off some risks there, in fact. Uh, but if it breaks out, I'd get back long again. <laughs> uh, definitely get back long if that would happen. Uh, for now, of course, it's not financial advisor, not a financial advisor. I would be, again, using 262 to, or sorry, 2 272 to kind of generate trades off of um, or manage risk upon, you know, especially if I got into that golden cross a little bit earlier. So yeah, I know a lot of people have been trading this and trading it really well. Um, so congratulations to them. Like my God, uh, th th this has been a pretty difficult market for um, for spies in a way, and uh, just happy for the people who've been doing well. And what's up, Mister Crypto TV? Welcome, man. And have some nice uh, have some nice animations in your life. By the way, I should also announce. My God, man, I forgot to announce. <laughs> if you if you are interested in my programs and uh, and you know how to do animation, graphic design work like you just saw right there, I would love to speak with you. I'd love to give you 50% off of any of my programs. Of course, I am looking for a very specific person with this because I want to give a, I want to give a 50% discount to someone who likely wouldn't have been able to afford the programs beforehand. Maybe they're, maybe they're younger, younger uh, you know, may, may, maybe finance is not in order, whatever it might be. I want to give that opportunity to that person and have a little bit of value arbitrage there. Um, you know, I, I know that animations, like you can go on Fiverr and you, uh, people have been, people have messaged me and saying, Hey, why are you doing that 50% off when you just go on Fiverr and, and get it done for like 50 bucks? Well, you know, again, man, I, I just, I, I want to give someone who wouldn't have had the chance otherwise to have a chance. So if that sounds like you hit me up, I'd be happy to give you 50% off of any one of my programs. Just want a few a uh, few pieces of work done, um, like three three to six uh, second video clips, or sorry, not animation clips, um, similar to that, and uh, and I'd love to hear from you. So again, uh, do let me know, and uh, and yeah. All right, so we spoke about all these things. Uh, do we want to look at Dixie? Yeah, let's go look at Dixie. I want to start covering some more Forex. Um, Dixie on a weekly looking okay. Now, lower time frames were, yeah, uh, lower time frames are bouncing off support right here and overall I do have this as likely an ascending triangle and with this support coming in right here I would look for this bounce to actually get picked up a little bit more it's 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 a travesty that I can't go to a lower time frame on Dixie but uh, as far as the weekly goes I think that that's this is fine for a pullback um, you know we are wedging ourselves into this massive triangle uh, with an apex early July so it can spend some more time in this area typically these things will break when they're about 69 percent full um, will explode, will burst to the to its maximum, but um, this one's pretty damn close. So yeah, I, I, I'd be on the lookout for this guy to actually burst. Uh, typically, gonna you know, I'd be more bullish on this than not. I do think that daily has um, uh, some good indications on it. Uh, let's 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 double check this. Uh, yeah, okay, daily R size, okay. What about daily Stokes? Yeah, still reaching for it as well. What about the weekly though? Yeah, weekly's up. I like that. And weekly RSI I'm looking okay as well. You know, again, I I don't I don't have a, I don't have a, like a time preference on when this breaks, but I do think that this probably does break to the upside, and I would be looking for a move at the very least to about 99, 99 bucks, ninety nine and a half, and then the measure the full measure move is actually technically all the way up here at around one hundred one. Um, so. Fair enough. You know, that's that's what we're looking for right there. More importantly, sorry, let's actually go back to Dixie for a second. More importantly with Dixie, and the reason why I bring this up is because it does actually have implications with Bitcoin or, or so I think. Uh, let's put on Bitcoin. Let's overlay the Bitcoin chart with Dixie. And there we go. So so Bitcoin is the blue line chart in the background. And let's start it from let's start it from essentially 20 remember 2016 2017 was when bitcoin essentially started to go fully parabolic which is what you see right here bitcoin's going parabolic and what do you see on dixie dixie's going straight down dixie goes straight down and it bottoms out right when bitcoin actually first initially hit 6000 um we scroll and it looks a little bit better yeah when when bitcoin sorry when bitcoin first uh, hit 6000 right here that's when that's when dixie bottomed out then Bitcoin went into a sideways consolidation, which you see Dixie kind of go a little bit up. Then Bitcoin moved down. You see a big move up in Dixie during that time. And now Bitcoin is going into, uh, into a sideways consolidation once again. In bit, and, and you see Dixie going into, into a consolidation, a more bullish consolidation compared with Bitcoin's, what look, what, what, which looks a little bit more like a um, bearish consolidation. So I do see these as inverses from each other coming off of Bitcoin's parabolic blow off top in uh, 2017. 
So to me, this, 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 this is quite interesting. This is quite interesting as you see a direct inverse relationship, which you would expect because Bitcoin trades against what? It trades against the dollar. You know, if, if the dollar is going up, then if everything else equal, Bic the value of Bitcoin would technically go down, right? So, yeah, um, the fact that Dixie's kind of knocking on the door of a major breakout uh, does put me on edge as well. It does make me think that Bitcoin probably does break out to the downside. All right, let me get rid of this, and we'll wrap up the most important things we aware of on the daily. Of course, it needs to be no more complicated than this. Do we want, you know, which which one breaks first, 3,800 or 3,930? Whichever one breaks first is going to be in the next, you know, kind of mac or medium time frame direction. Uh, very low time frames. If we want to go down to a two hour, we could say that actually Bitcoin is kind of spilling over right now. We'll be looking for support around 38, you know, 25. <laughs> if you're playing the very low time frames, you're looking for a scalp. Um, but overall, remember the higher time frames do take precedence here, and uh, they have been unchanged for the past few weeks. So that's going to do it for today. Again, I want you thank you for joining me on this one. I will be back on later with some more live stream action. Hope that you're having a, the best day possible. Of, as always, want to be wishing you well. Want to be a well wisher is really what I want to do. And uh, and of course, you know. So. I'll be signing off now and I'll see you later. Take care.